And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay. Okay. Another week has flown by. We're back. I know I always say that, but I'm saying it again. If you don't like it, too fucking bad. <coughs> yeah. That's right. Excuse me while I adjust my chair. My blackthorn shillelagh has been marinating in extra virgin organic coconut oil all week because it needed a facial. Looks like it also it got a larger sash down there. No, it's not the same. It's the same size? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, a polypropylene cord. Thanks to the Dollar Tree. Ah. Gotta love these dollar stores today, you know what I mean? Gotta love, it. it's just the little, the little modern conveniences that all add up to a, a supposedly happier life, more well, efficient life. That's all the little life. guy can afford, is Dollar Trees, yeah, Dollar you're, Stores. You're right about that, God, if it wasn't, yeah. if it wasn't for certain things, I mean, I don't know. I was just watching before, uh, waiting for you to come here. I was watching America's Test Kitchen and they did a test on carbon steel knives versus stainless steel knives. And of course the stainless steel was much better than the carbon well, steel. Well carbon but, you use commercially, right? By, by, uh, but you should see the prices of the carbon steel from like $73 to $300 for one knife. One stinking knife. Well, you, then you better get the most commonly used knife in the kitchen because... Stainless steel is 40 bucks. Well, you know, I, 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 there's a store by us called Chef Central. Actually, there's a new restaurant supply warehouse in Bergen County, New Jersey here that opened up that looks very impressive. Somebody told me that the public can go in there. But anyway, Chef Central has, is where I got my very sharp mandolin. Not the musical instrument, but the device you use to slice. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an Italian company uh, called OXO. OXO, uh, good grip. OXO, uh, Mario Battaglia, they had a video going on in the store with Mario Battaglia promoting OXO. And it works really well. You see how we reward? I made homemade coleslaw. But uh, um, anyway, um, I was looking at the knives. You had, of course, Henkels from Germany, and they're not cheap at all. They are supposed to be high quality steel, right? Mm -hmm. But then, then there was this Japanese company that was more expensive than Henkels, you know, and uh, they looked even more impressive. But, you know, I mean, usually Germany makes the best quality steel you know it's like um, but in some cases you really I, I don't think the average person uses every single knife in a in a set <laughs> like if you no. if somebody if you if you got if you're a person with big bucks mm -hmm. and let's say uh, somebody gives you a gift of an entire set of chef knives, you would probably use like maybe two or three 
Yeah. Maybe the most. And the rest will just sit there, you know, in storage. Uh, so I'd rather buy one at a time because I know it's like, uh, hey, people who play golf as a hobby, I, I hear they don't necessarily use, uh, every, club. use every club. No. You know. So anyway, I, we digress tremendously, tremendously from our show. But uh, being that uh, being that we're starting off really um, really light this week on progressive discussions, by the way, and this happens to be the Fourth of July weekend, two thousand. Let me finish. This happens to be the Fourth of July weekend, two thousand sixteen show. Uh, happy birthday, uh, uh, ol uh, the oligarch the corporate oligarch of fascist states of America. Happy birthday to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, and my mother. My mother's birthday is the 4th of July. Oh she, boy. She's a Cancerian. Cancer the crab. Or a Cancer the crap, as the Chinese say. Is it crap? You have a rive of crap? Um, and the Spanish say crack. Hey. They can't have trouble pronouncing the B in crap. But anyway, yes, uh, happy uh, oligarch states of America, fascist oligarch corporate controlled, happy birthday to you. Now, um, there's not that many cars on the road, which make me very happy. Now, speaking of light subjects, you people at the delicatessens, I don't know if, if they're used to so many of these freaking senior citizens in, uh, uh, requesting this. But I hate when somebody gives me packages of cold cuts that are so thinly sliced, <laughs> they're like cellophane, they're almost transparent. And do you know why I hate this? Because when I try to separate the damn slices to make a sandwich, okay, or a sandwich like my grandmother used to say, it shreds as I'm peeling it. It's so f damn thin. I was discussing this with William Hamilton Morrow the third. He says he hates it. He 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 always gets them like the cold cuts come vacuum packed. You know they they don't come too thick. They don't come too thin. They're just the right slice so you can peel them. But this cellophane transparent slice bit. You try to find the end, man. The same thing with cheese. You try to find the end. It could be turkey breast, it could be boiled ham, smoked ham. And it shreds because you can't peel the slices off. What a stupid ass uh, a request. You know, you senior citizens will make very good fertilizer to do that. Yay! Now, um, let me start off the show by saying that I want to do a political analysis of the insane asylum that we call uh, campaign year of 2016 in the United States. Yes, it is an insane asylum and very embarrassing uh, corruption that doesn't make us look good to the world. There's so much corruption in the United States government right now. It's it's really a, a, a total total a, a despicable embarrassment to the world. Um, the Republican debates were insane asylums, one after the next. The Democratic debates were, of course, rigged. And there are, right now, there are probably several class action lawsuits. Uh, I think there's one against the DNC, one against uh, uh, Deborah Wasserman Schultz. There's, uh, uh, they're all over the place, all these class action lawsuits. But, it is a known fact. Uh, aside the, uh, aside from the private meeting, which I, I don't have to be a psychic to tell you what happened. When uh, Slick Willie Billary Clinton met with um, uh, Loretta Lynch, he most likely asked or pleaded Loretta Lynch to back off, to lay off his precious wicked witch of a wife. Hillary, uh, leave her alone. Eh. Okay, 
and uh, also uh, um, Barack Obama and Loretta Lynch uh, both uh, stated that they will not or, or they do not want to indict Hillary Clinton which doesn't surprise me because they're, a, they're all establishment uh, major two-party system uh, pol uh, politicians and uh, uh, they, uh, they're uh, indebted to the um, to the the uh, top one percent donors uh, to their campaign. They're indebted to the fat cats, to the top one percent, uh, the oligarchs. So they're you know establishment. The only thing that shocked the hell out of me was Elizabeth Warren. I honestly thought she was going to be the last progressive in the Democratic Party, or, or should I say Democrat Party, but now, now she sold out to um, establishment, 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 across the board, uh, in both parties, which got, are two sides of the same coin. She got her price. Yes, yes, she got her price. Now, uh, uh, Loretta Lynch, I hold She says she's going to... Responsible. Uh, you know, whatever the FBI comes up with, she's going. That's what's going to happen. She, she says she she didn't recuse herself, but she said that she has nothing to do with it. You know, the FBI comes up with something. Really? That's it. Yeah. So she's under. So the words. In other words, if she does the wrong thing, the unethical thing. From what I understand, she herself is under investigation to make sure. That she's doing her job. That's probably Republican-led, like the Benghazi crap. You know, I gotta, I got the only time you're ever going to see me salute Donald Trump and the Republican Party, which are not necessarily friends with each other. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's another. That's, that's a. That's, that's a, right. That's another crazy reality show in itself. Mm. I gotta salute them because. Directly or indirectly or whatever. I know, I, I know they don't... The last thing in the world they want to do is help Bernie Sanders. But, if anybody could uh, fearlessly dig up dirt and expose Hillary Clinton, that's good old Donald Trump and the Republican Party. And you could, you could take that to the bank. And, and I think there are, there, are, there are blessing in disguise for the grassroots revolution. So there is a purpose. Just like God probably had a purpose for allowing Satan to do his thing for, for all these uh, many millennia. So the Republican Party, I think, with especially Trump, especially Trump, the attack dog Trump, is a blessing in disguise to Bernie Sanders. Now, Loretta Lynch, now I, I get two conflicting articles that I see online. Some articles say, okay, the FBI is, is uh, going to be questioning Hillary Clinton, the FBI is doing this, the FBI is doing that. Mm -hmm. Then I get articles that say, well, the FBI wa it, it was told to uh, lay off of, the, uh, of Hillary's emails for two years. Two years. Oh, sure. So, she, so she can get elected and mm. and uh, and and uh, end up in the White House. Mm. Lay off of Hillary. So, which is it? Are they? Are do I believe the articles that she's being questioned and investigated right now, or do I believe the articles that they're completely laying off Hillary for two years? If they lay off Hillary for two years, it's obvious. That the whole entire fix Democrat. Fix is in. Huh? The fix is in. Oh, she'll be nominated. The fix is in. No, no, it is rigged. Yeah, but if you're talking about your, what you're just saying. You're talking about getting Hillary. In. But as it stands right now, the FBI is continuing its investigation. And I don't know why it's taking so damn long. Okay? If they were investigating me, it would be over in one day. Hey, look at it this way. Poor Tricky Dick, may uh, you know, he, he rest in peace. Richard Milhouse, Maxwell House, whatever the hell his middle name was, I think it was Milhouse. Milhouse Nixon had to resign 
from the presidency with threat of impeachment mm -hmm. for uh, Watergate, for, for, for tapping the, uh, the phone lines, in the Watergate Hotel, right? Democrats. No, for, 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 being spy, for spying, right. But, but what Richard Nixon and uh, Ehrlichman and uh, Haldeman. Haldeman, what they did was a pimple on the ass of an elephant compared to Hillary Clinton's uh, escapades and the emails and all the all the, the things she's guilty of. Okay, so I don't know if this is political correctness. You know, we got to go easy on the woman. I have no idea what this is about, but I have a feeling that it, it has something to do with the fact that Hillary is most likely the best damn puppet that the oligarch has to date. Well, it has to do with the fact that those who are wealthy get away with, you know, murder. Being crooked, well, being corrupt. Well, she... This is America. She's not just wealthy, she... she uh, uh, apparently doesn't have enough money and she's working for not not the not the minorities not women's rights not civil rights like she well they don't pay well you don't no they no don't she's really not well huh they don't give her two hundred fifty thousand dollars for a speech right but the idiot supporters think that she cares about women's rights well, of course because she says so and <laughs> and minorities and civil rights nah she says so right I'm fighting for but, you. But she's, you yeah, know, she's really fighting for the, for the, for the oligarch, the top 1%. Now, now this uh, former, uh, that's another story that's popular, uh, uh, former um, CIA agents that uh, worked with the Clintons when Bill was president. Uh, they hated Hillary, but they liked Bill. Bill used to take them out and party <laughs> with them. Hillary was a very abusive, very nasty. They hated her, and uh, one of them wants to uh, write a tell-all book, but he's afraid that he might get bumped off. It's a possibility. That, by Hillary. Like the mysterious uh, 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 crushing of the throat with a barbell. Now they're trying to say uh, that uh, Vince Foster was Hillary's lover, and that's why he got killed. Well, this black gentleman that was supposed to testify for her didn't didn't they have any any like security cameras in the gymnasium where he was working out? No, not back then. No, it happened now? recently. He found well, what the hell is he going to say? He's found dead. He was, he, somebody was. Well, supposed who the hell is he? To, I don't know. Some tall black guy. So what's the relationship to her? It looks like Sidney Portier or something. He was supposed to testify in front of the FBI uh -huh. against Hillary Clinton and then he recently he was found uh, dead by way of a uh, barbell. Huh? Death by barbell. Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> Just before the he was supposed to uh, appear under oath and um, testify mm -hmm. against uh, Hillary. So he, he became killed it. He was found killed it. So, oh, you know? I have no idea. Yeah, so. It's like, and then there's, um, oh, uh, like, um, there's something about Hillary. Uh, like, she's still saying that she is not indebted to any. Uh, provide any favors to anybody who gives her mm -hmm. money. <laughs> She's still saying that. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, who the hell gave her a lot of money that she denied? Wall Street. Some, no, this particular company gave her oh. a shitload of money. What else is there? How about Monsanto? Yeah, I think that was it. My, yeah, Monsanto, she's, uh, oh yeah, she's pro-GMO. She's and so is Bill. Hey, Bill Gates, when he talks about GMOs, in Africa, he talks about GMOs in Africa as a way of feeding the starving people. But in reality, the man o uh, uh, owns like 500,000 shares of Monsanto. They are, they are now going to hide GMOs from you. 
Well, in the United you, States, yeah. You it will not be labeled. You will not be able to find out about it. Right. Uh, well, Vermont is fighting that right now. No, this is to get rid of Vermont. This is to override what Vermont is trying to do. That's pretty, pretty damn underhand. There's no shit. Well, what company that uh, you know? Oh, by the way, Bill Gates is not is, underhand. Is also pushing vaccines on these poor third world countries. Oh yeah. Which are made by Monsanto, right? The toxic vaccines. Yeah. Now, oh, and the Gardasil vaccine and the flu vaccines are still uh, claiming victims. Yep. Uh, even today. Now, um, the uh, GMO thing, you know, it's funny, you know, Republicans, corporatist Republicans are always talking about how we should leave everything up to the states, but when the states want to do something that they don't like, yeah. then they want the federal government to override them. Well, the states right now, <laughs> uh, and I, I think there's like five or seven so far. They want a constitutional amendment. I mean, a constitutional uh, con convention to change some things, especially Citizens United. And I don't. You have to have 35 states to agree, yeah. and then you can have the convention. I don't think. I don't think the states like the idea of having to kowtow to the federal government and, you know... To well, that's how the Constitution was, you know, enacted. You know, uh, 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 hey, all of a sudden, the federal government is thinking hard about legalizing marijuana across the board. I, I can guarantee... Hold on, where's my shillelagh? Right now. I can guarantee you why. <coughs> the psychic ability of James P. Madonna predicts that the reason why the feds want to legalize marijuana across the board nationwide is so Monsanto can sell their GMO marijuana exclusively to you only. Well, if they do that, that's that's, that's why it will be. That's my However, hunch. that's my hunch. Is it it's Colorado right now that is legally there, right? Colorado, Washington, and Oregon. Okay. Well, do you know that in those states? You can get your marijuana and stuff, and then the federal can come right in and arrest you. Because federal law overrides state law. But then... And the federal law is still, marijuana is illegal. Right. But that's like... Um, but if it gets legalized, it will be like, because of some big company having something so, to do with manufacturing. So, you know? if you, you buy the recreational marijuana in Colorado, or Washington, you can't just walk around with a joint sticking out of your mouth in public. You gotta go indoors somewhere. You gotta go smoke it, you know, and hide. Federal SWAT team will come down on your ass so fast. So the state, the state doesn't, uh, the state doesn't say, hey, my state ha says it's legalized and the governor says, National Guard, intercept that SWAT team. No. But what does the National Guard do? Play with themselves? Federal what? government o overrides the so, national. So, in guard other words, legally, legally, the feds can send in people. SWAT team, yeah. SWAT team. The feds can legally get away with, it, is what you're saying. What do you think they did in uh, uh, the civil rights uh, when they sent the uh, marshals down uh, south? To protect kids trying to go to college, black kids, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, what about they the... They override. What about the... Law. Oh, God, I'm just thinking about that, that preposterous, ridiculous insanity called prohibition. You believe that crap? Do you believe mm. that crap? That alcoholic beverages have been consumed worldwide for thousands of years. Kids are given booze. And 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 uh, 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 pregnant women in Ireland are prescribed uh, Guinness Stout, and all of a sudden these 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 pieces of shit right wing evangelicals come along and they make it illegal. They were doing God's work. How the hell did they know what God's work is? Oh, they know everything. They know everything. Like they oh, hold on, hold on. We're gonna do a little. We're gonna do a little Chisler's Hall of Shame. I said that like Red Skelton when he says it was time to do a little Gertrude and, and Heathcliff. Remember that? Gertrude and Heathcliff. <laughs> Shame on you. 
you rat bastards, if you ever ring my doorbell, I'm going to answer it with, oh. my, with my sword. Jehovah's Witnesses, shame on you for destroying an ancient Native American uh, uh, temple <gasps> in Mexico. Oh. Destroying it. An ancient historic landmark of na like built ISIS. by Native peoples. Huh? Sounds like ISIS. What a, they did in Palmyra. A, a, a historic ancient landmark of representing the native people in Mexico, most likely either Mayans or Aztecs, okay, representing their culture because it had nothing to do with their stupid cult of a religion, they destroyed it. So, big time Chisler's Hall of Shame on Jehovah's Witnesses. It's a cult, just like many uh, of these uh, so called phony, counterfeit Christian. Uh, uh, organized religion cults. Hmm. It's a cult, yeah, because it's not, it's not really biblical as far as accurate uh, Bible well, interpretation. Well, the Bible does not say that they're supposed to go around like they do on Saturday. They're not supposed to go to house, talking about house to house. You're talking about proselytizing. Exactly. That way. Right. Because God, you know, I'm doing an article now. Right. Uh, about the. God and some people think that God is a socialist. And uh, well, he's not a he's not a, a he's not a capitalist. He's, he's not, not a, a conservative. Communist, he's, he's not, not a, a socialist. He has his own economic system. Right. But the point is that <coughs> how God set up his system uh, <coughs> is not government enforcement of giving and etc. It's supposed to be. Uh, the g generosity is supposed to be a part, compassion is supposed to be a part of every person. Yeah. And the giving is supposed to be voluntary. Right. Oh, by the way, prayer is not supposed to be showing off in public with your hands up in the air. It's supposed to be humble and private. In your closet. Right. Now, getting back to God's economics, the very fact that the Bible <coughs> tells the rich to help the poor and give to the poor is in a way synonymous with the with a, a let's say northern europe scandinavia democratic socialism of taxing of providing social programs to help the poor and taxing the rich well it is very synonymous to that over you're, there over there it involves government under right. God, it does not uh, involve government. Yeah, I know, it but it involves free choice. But the end on the individual. But the end result is the rich are be probably not willingly giving because rich people don't willingly usually do well, nice things. Well, that's our rich people, but you know, under yeah. God's economics, yeah, they will be taught to do to do that. Right, right. There will be. I mean, let's face it. Be happy God's laws. There is a form of coercion going on here to con to coerce the the people for being good to be yeah. good. Well, you're not gonna you you're know? not gonna have uh, the God's economics in the world tomorrow. No, you're not, you're not gonna, gonna have it at all because why aren't Republicans promulgating it now? You're not They're so close to the Bible. You're not gonna have the top one percent oligarch. Uh, you're not going to have uh, all these CEOs, the Koch brothers, the CEO of Monsanto, CEO of Nestle's, Peter Brabeck, all these CEO, all these greedy, stingy, uh, despicable CEOs. Uh, God's not going to allow that. No, because under capitalism, that is what capitalism is all about. It's about individualism and self-interest. It's inherently, Period. it's inherently evil. Evil in itself. From that point of yes. view, yes. Yes. Absolutely. Because it's all about the you, you, how much, and profit. The get way of life. You and profit. God is not about profit. God is not about interest. Usury. He says, lend to your brother and don't expect anything in return. Except, you know, when he pays it back. Right. If the, no interest. If, if the poor man is hungry, feed him. 
That's why many, many religionists and uh, those calling themselves Christians say, uh, they say that the parable of the talents, Matthew 25, the parable of the talents is about money. Well, if it's about money, then the, pe the, 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 the two uh, guys that uh, uh, added to their talents when Jesus comes back, that's interest. Yeah. That's so about, that would be usury. It's so about that is doing, not about usury. It's about doing God's work. It's about the talents represent, they don't represent money. They represent doing God's work. And if you, like in the uh, parable of the, the talents, the, if you weren't doing God's work while he was gone, and you didn't add to the work while he came back, mm -hmm. then like the one guy, the one guy with the one talent or whatever it was, which he put away, so he didn't, he didn't uh, put it to work at all. So when Jesus come back, he gives him back his talent. They said, I know you're a, you're a tough guy and everything like that, so I was afraid I was going to lose it or something like that, so I saved it for you. Well, Jesus gave that talent to the one who had increased his mm -hmm. talent. Mm -hmm. But it's not about money because it would be that would be interest, usury, and that is not what God right. suggests. Now analyzing the American want to do because it's like gives me a headache. <laughs> you have it seems like you have three classifications. Alright, now the the tea baggers and evangelicals, which a lot of them don't have a pot to piss in. Okay, they're of course they're under the spell of their crazy cult religion, but they also have a lot of uh, you know bigotry and hatred inside of them. And Donald Trump just encourages them to express it yeah. in public. He makes it comfortable he for them to, to express. It. Yeah. Right. He he plays on that. He now you have them. They're easy to figure out. They, they usually uh, identify themselves very easily. Then you have the neoliberals who only care about making history. Get the first black man in the, get that first black man in the White House. Get, get the first female in the White House. They just want to make history. They don't really think much of anything else because you know Hillary Clinton works for the very rich. So I don't know where they see that Hillary Clinton is going to do right by uh, uh, women's rights and civil yeah, if rights. They wanted, if they just wanted a woman and human in the White rights House, and human rights, they would vote for Jill Stein. Yes, she's also a woman. Now I used you know, to, she's running. I used to think very highly of Elizabeth Warren. Yeah, but she wasn't running. No, 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 no. But Elizabeth Warren is kind of like the Bible verse about the. Uh, 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 they look like sheep, but inside they're ravenous as wolves. You know the false pro. The well, false. Don't go that way yet. She just. But she's she's promoting a a a, a evil wicked witch. She's yeah, endorsing her. More more. See, people. you're like Paul no, Neese. No, 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 you're no, protecting no. Elizabeth Warren for some reason. Because you know why? Because why? he's feathering her bed. I don't care about feathering. But she's that, got a book. But that's selfish. She, yes, it's selfish. Well, but what good does America. that do? What good does that do to grassroots revolution? None. And Bernie well, she's Sanders. She's not a part of that. She never said she was. She's a, a piece of she's shit. She's feathering her bed. She's she's doing what Americans do when they get the opportunity. Fuck to, her. You know, to, uh, to, to 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 make the big bucks, they head for it. That's what they do. And now she's on the campaign trail with Clinton. Because she's probably looking to be VP. You and Paul ne Neef, you guys, I know you guys are ultra liberals. I know it. It has nothing to do with labels. It has to do with America. This is how you get all, ahead all I know in America. Is, all I know is, I thought she was progressive. Apparently she's not that progressive because she's not endorsing Bernie Sanders. Now, Robert Reich, from what I hear, is endorsing publicly claimed that he's endorsing he Bernie Sanders, yeah. which I, I'm kind of surprised because no. he worked for the Clintons. But whatever, whatever. But she's a, she's a cunt. She's no damn good in my book. Anybody who doesn't help the grassroots revolution, 
is a piece of shit, does nothing to improve my st my quality of life or the quality of life of every poor middle class person in America. If yeah. you don't do, if you're not contributing to them, then you are persona non grata, rotten hell. But and what she's that's doing, my opinion. but what she's doing is improving her life. Well, and you that's know what? what Americans try to do. Fuck her. All right, now, and you talk about God's economics, uh, 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 selfishness is bad. Yes. Oh, blah, blah, blah. and me, and now you're but defending that, that, Elizabeth Warren. Oh, now where did you get defending? You're saying it right now. I said you're, that that's what Americans do. You're expressing it. I'm not defending anyone. Where, this is your because protection. you are expressing. I'm like it, like there's you, nothing wrong with what Elizabeth Warren did. That's your perception. I did not say anything. With a big smile on his face. I did not say whether it was negative or positive what she's doing. I explained that that is what people do in America to All get right, ahead. I don't, want, I don't want to give her too much positive face time. Because I, she already got the horns from me. Now. But none of that was positive. Getting away from the neoliberal that just want to make history. Then there's a third part, and they are the progressives that are in, uh, intelligent, uh, uh, normal. Uh, they're not dysfunctional. They're the Bernie Krats, the Bernie Bros, the Bernie Sanders supporters. They're relatively people with common sense and logic, and they got their heads screwed on right. So there, there you have it. The three different types of American voters. I know I'm going to go on a tirade about Elizabeth Warren on our Facebook group because I'm riled up about it because this guy riled me up about it. But anyway. Yes, but be careful how you're riling. I'm riling accurately. She was not a part I, of the progressive movement. I thought she was... She was not running for anything. That gooseneck bitch. She got a book. She wrote a book. She is now promoting the book. She is now trying to promote herself. You know, she never publicly campaigned for Bernie Sanders. She wasn't a part of it. But I thought she was like buddy buddy with him. Again, these are your perceptions. She's always seen like so speaking nicely about him and. Because she's talking about the same thing about Wall Street and etc. They're on the same page. All right, now. But that doesn't mean she's going to promote him. Now, okay. We know. Barack Obama and Loretta Lynch are protecting Hillary Clinton. We already said that. Bernie Sanders is, uh, why on earth, first of all, I'm very suspicious about the two private meetings Bernie Sanders had with Barack Obama. I don't know why he has to stick his nose in the grassroots revolution since his term is kind of towards the end. I have no idea what they spoke of. But this negotiation that Bernie Sanders feels he has to have with Hillary Clinton is even more bizarre. And the fact that he's obsessed with helping or saving or making the Democratic Party platform more progressive, he's obsessed with the Democratic Party when he could very easily, months ago, go with Jill Stein at the Green Party and say, screw Wasserman Schultz, screw the DNC, I'm going independent, Green Party, it's going to be Sanders and, and Stein, and that's it, and be done with it. But he's got this kumbaya syndrome obsession with bringing everybody together, arm in arm, in the Democratic Party, oh, we got to get the Democratic Party platform more progressive, or whatever. He's got this obsession. Now, maybe it's an experiment. He's going to see if he could get it done. Maybe if he doesn't get it done or can't get it done, or Hillary won't meet him halfway or, you know, see the light, maybe he'll go independent. Now, his uh, campaign manager threw some hints who I would have fired him a long time ago. He's too, too much of a pacifist, pussy, hipster fucking neoliberal. I would have fired his ass a long time ago. Bernie has come to the point where he knows he's a loser. So you so, so you you don't do. want you don't want democratic socialism to run the United States. Is what you deep down is what you're trying to say. 
Well, it never would have. You want the first woman in the White House. Well, Again, admit where do it. you come up with these? Well, how come you are so negative about when the I grassroots vote, revolution? And when I vote right now, it will be for Bernie. But if 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 if, if uh, Hillary was and Trumpy, I would vote for myself as I always do. All right, now Jill Stein. Where does come up with these perceptions? Jill Stein, because I I see. No, no, no! You're, you're not, labeling. You're not on the ban. You're not on the. I'm telling you what wagon. the facts are. What if not Ber what you want to perceive? What if Bernie? You no, know, you say Bernie is done. All right. Bernie has no. He has accepted the fact he's a loser because he hired a a loser for a campaign team. That is not part of my what I just made my. He could have. He could have went. He has come to the point where he thinks he's a loser. All right. What if he goes with Jill Stein? After the convention. That's what you're saying. What if? I just said he has come to the point where he accepts the fact he's a loser. You know what? He doesn't want to do anything else. He's a pussy. He has no balls. He's not a man. If Whatever. he accepts the fact, if he turns his back on the grassroots revolution, he is dry sack Sanders in my book. Whatever. But the point is, that's the ultra liberalism. He only feels that right now. His only objective is to try to change the Democratic Party. Fuck platform. the Democratic Party. That's They're all. corrupt. The both parties no are corrupt. No kidding, but he's running in it. He's a, he is a horse's ass for leading everybody on in the grassroots revolution. All the work, all the rallies, all the speeches, all the travel. And then, then he gives up. He folds like a cheap camera. He hasn't folded yet. He just accepted the fact he's you know a what? loser. Let's get let's let's sink our teeth into the goddamn readings because I don't want to talk about this subject anymore. Sure. You'll piss me the fuck off. Well, what did I do? I told you the truth. He, Bernie Sanders, has accepted the fact that he's a loser and that it's all over for him because he is too stupid to see the options. It's right before his well, why eyes. Why don't you tell him the options? It's but right before his said. eyes. It's called independent of the two-party system. It's called Jill Stein and the Green Party. Ralph Nader was trying to give him advice many, Did many times. It? Did he take it? Because he's, uh, he's He's got a cinder. Whatever. He's got a cinder block on top of he his head. He didn't take the advice. No, but he had private meetings with his good friend Barack Obama. Yeah, well, that was for something entirely. I have different. no idea what that was about. I know what it was about. Go easy on her. Oh my God! That's what it was about. Protecting Hillary, and he had the nerve to tell the head of the grassroots revolution to go easy on the enemy. Correct. Oh, because. Barack Obama, maybe he's going it, to be out there, you know, maybe it's campaigning okay, Maybe it's okay with Barack Obama and Joe Biden and, and, and Barbara Boxer. Maybe it's okay with them that Americans are only only have a lousy $12 an hour minimum wage. Well, you know what? That is Americans true. don't want to work for $12 an hour. They want to get compensated for their, for their services adequately. But enough of them did not come out and vote properly, did they? So, so just because somebody tries to sabotage your dreams and and your so-called revolution, that means you have to comply with them. No, but they're in charge. No, they're not. He's his term is is, is fizzling out. The Obama administration. Obama was never in charge. Where do you come up with this? When you say they're in charge, you don't I'm talking about the people who are making the decisions. That get their money from the big companies right, you and wanna, the oligarchs. You want to say people? You want to see people? They're in charge. You want to see people with real intestinal fortitude and courage <laughs> that I admire? Him. Not in politics. Did you see the photo of the millions of people standing up to France's ruling class? Did you see that photo? Millions of people showed up. Millions of people showed up. That's what the grassroots revolution should have been. That's why France is more socialistic than America. Well, they showed up. By hor and hordes and hordes and hordes of people showed up. Well, <laughs> and how has it changed the government and made it even more socialistic? Well, socialism is, is, if you're middle class or poor, socialism is fine by me. I mean, I don't see any, anything wrong with it. If I was a stingy, greedy, rich bastard, then maybe I would say, oh, we mustn't have that. You know. The problem people see with it is that the government 
owns everything and is in charge of everything. Therefore, it becomes, you know, totalitarian. When they say ruling class in France, they have like a fascist government right now? It's socialistic! All right, so what's their fucking problem? What is it? What they, it's what not is, socialistic enough. Oh, well, the people like the Europeans are pretty smart Jesus. people, I guess. Well, <laughs> well they, they showed up. Uh, you know, they, none of them have gone all the way. Well, they showed up in the millions, which means they're ready to fight. In the millions. Let's understand something about America. Americans have no fucking back. America, France, or whatever. No, there is no. You know, bring a million people to Washington. It's just a good photo op. Not millions. If it doesn't get something done, millions. it's a photo op. The French showed up in millions. I'm talking about America. Oh, that million man march uh, goes to Washington. And uh, what happened? It's a photo op. That's the correct. <laughs> That's so, all it is. It, it looks nice in a, in a newspaper if the article. people in charge do not change the laws, make the laws, Make them good, make them good, make them good. They don't get done. That's why I say war is the only answer. Okay? War at home is the only answer. Anyway. We had one. Not enough. Need one, need another one. Every it didn't work. They still down south, they still think they want slavery. So what, so what do you what do you do? You just you bend over and say fuck me in the ass for no lubrication, you know? What do you you become a victim for the rest of your life? You know, for all eternity? Anyway, everything we talk about is part of our series. Capitalism in a conch shell. There's the conch. Okay, listening to that conch energy from the briny deep. Okay, let us sink our teeth into these readings. The same old shit. Same old shit. When I was 22, okay. I wondered how credit card companies made money. <laughs> I had two cards at the time. They were free to use. Every month I would buy things with the cards. And because I used auto pay, uh -oh. every month uh -oh. the balance would be deducted from my checking account. Uh. As far as I could tell, this was a free service. <laughs> and if I decided not to pay my credit card bills and just go bankrupt, there was no way the card issuer would make money off me. With things like cash back, it seemed like I was getting paid to use my card. What kind of business model pays people to use its product? Ten years later, as I helped a friend figure out how to refinance his credit card bills, I realized how the business model must work. Card issuers, namely banks, profit by charging penalty fees when people pay off their credit card balances late. <laughs> of course, that isn't the only way they make money. Increase the interest. They, along with MasterCard and Visa, also charge merchants fees to use the payment services. And they charge other fees for things like balance transfers. But a lot of their business model is just consumer lending, which they do at rates of about 12 to 14 percent. Yeah, that'll be the day. Yeah, but not only do they slap the penalty on you but for being late, but they uh they have a tendency to, uh, if you have a good, if you have a low interest credit card, they'll jack it up. They'll, ja they'll jack yes. up the interest. Yeah. Oh yeah, they'll no, they'll they'll hit they'll hit you with every fee they can possibly. Because muster. they can do anything today. They used to be held in check. But the the uh, Mr. Saint Ronald Reagan had the laws changed. Yeah. Okay. Well, merchants have told me, store owners showed me that every time somebody uses their card, they they say that, that they don't know they don't know what to do. I mean, if they refuse the cards, they lose sales. If they accept the cards, they have to unfairly pay this fee every time the yeah, customer right. uses their card, swipes the card, and it, it's really it's really 
usury, usury in the worst form. Bingo! <laughs> All of capitalism is usury. And, and Ronald Reagan, not only, uh, well, I guess he pretty much, not only did he uh, 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 unfairly shift the tax burden onto the middle class and, and uh, caused the rich to go And on the it. poor. Ah, big Don't deal. Don't forget the poor. The poor pay taxes. Ah, uh, they buy a pack of gum in, 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 in the corner store and pay a 6% sales tax? 7. 7%, All right. Yeah. All right, the poor too, so... All you're talking about is income tax. And then the rich go on a tax vacation thanks to Ronald Reagan. But he also was involved with uh, deregulation of businesses and um, he didn't like unions uh, very much even though he was the president of the Screen Actors Guild at one time. Yeah, when it was opportune for him to do such things to make a living, fine. Anything that you know? helps the uh, rich person's uh, little nest egg, they see, they cherry pick. Republicans cherry pick what benefits no, they them. they have a myth. The myth is that the rich create jobs. Therefore, if you you take away their tax burden, they will create more jobs. Ah, oh, that bullshit trickle-down Reaganomics bullshit. Yeah, yeah, it's all, it's all myth. It's all myth. Now, why would a consumer take out a loan like that? If you're buying a house, you would get a mortgage at a rate of about 3.5%. You're buying a car, you'd get an auto loan which is at more like uh, 3%. Items like furniture and electronics cost much less, so it seems pretty easy to save up money to buy these things most of the time. Maybe you spend more than you can pay off right now. Uh, what the hell? If you just got your first job or and you need to use credit cards to furnish your apartment, but that isn't an everyday event. The only reasonable routine use I can think of for credit cards where you don't pay off the balance is medical expenses. These come on suddenly and can be big, even with health insurance. This was my friend's reason for running up credit card debt, and he's not alone. In 2012, a New York Times survey found that the average low to moderate income household had more than $1,600 in credit card debt from medical bills. Yet the amount of credit card debt in the United States far exceeds that number. Here's the average outstanding consumer debt per person, most of it from credit cards. Basically, that means there are a lot of people out there who buy things with credit cards and who then either can't or won't pay for those things at the end of the month, and who instead decide to make payments on the debt each month at 12% or 14% interest. That's a very expensive way to live, but some people do it. Why? Why? Well, you won't find much of an explanation in the school of economics that assumes everyone is rational and where people only borrow when it makes economic sense to do so. Uh. But behavioral finance is replete with examples of short-sightedness, lack of self-control and over-optimism about one's future. These behavioral biases might not afflict everyone, but lots of people are certainly vulnerable, especially the poor and less educated. Credit card companies need people to spend more than they can afford, but not so much that they, they, they default on the payments. So they could benefit from targeting individuals who are more likely to have cognitive failings. This is the dark side 
of behavioral finance. Some new research by economist Antoinette Shoar of Massachusetts Institute of Technology and Hong Ru of Miang Technological University claims to find exactly such a result. The authors use data from a private company that tracks credit card offers. They find that less educated consumers who are likely to be less financially sophisticated are more frequently given offers that include backloaded costs. Those are plans that start with low rates but increase later with extra high over limit and late payment fees. In other words, those are likely to be borrowers who make bad financial decisions, racking up debt and eventually paying much more in interest. Meanwhile, more educated households tend not to be offered these plans. So, my 22-year-old intuition was sort of right. In a rational world where people pay high interest rates only when they absolutely need to, credit card companies have a harder time making money. They still have merchant fees, of course, but without the ability to exploit people's financial miscalculations they wouldn't be so consistently profitable. Well, and number one, number uh, one, uh, the rates are too high and in the beginning. Yeah, I guess what they don't want are people to pay off their balance. Oh, they don't like that. In either. a timely fashion. No. Well, like my uh, old friend Iron Man Vinnie Blake always said, if you uh, don't have the money, it was never meant to be. But I can I could see how a family would have to possibly use their credit card. Let's say the refrigerator goes. Now you need a refrigerator. You know, like certain things sometimes you have to go with the credit card, but not to use it willy nilly at, at every whim, you know, or if you're a uh, um, um, uh, impulse buyer, impulse shopper, you know. No. Another thing is the threat from the companies. If you don't use your card, they'll take it away. So, um, so you might as well say America is just one big gigantic rig system in every way, shape, and form. When, when, when conservatives, corporatists, establishment, whatever you want to use, for, is, are, are in charge. Yeah, corrupt, corrupt people, corrupt establishment, corporatists, blah blah blah, um, paid off. It all goes hand in hand with capitalism, the devil's economics. All right, now you got time for one small one before lunch or not really? Federal health officials want to know whether hand sanitizers used by millions of Americans work. I like to wash my hands the old-fashioned way with soap and water. The Food and Drug Administration is asking for new studies on how the antiseptic gels and rubs fight germs and get absorbed into the body, with a particular focus on children and pregnant women. Yeah, see, I like to rinse off. I don't like. There's nothing better than soap and water. I don't like to to kill bacteria and then rub and then keep it on my hand. You know, like you know to what? rub the dirt and dust and germs that to my why hand. Doctors wash their hands under running water. Yeah, I like to rinse For that it off. Reason. I like to rinse I like to rinse the crap off. Yeah, the germs are rinsing off while you're washing. Yeah. The proposal unveiled Wednesday is part of an ongoing government effort to review decades-old chemicals that have never had a comprehensive federal review. Oh, gee. 
How lovely. Agency officials stressed that the review does not mean the FDA believes these products are ineffective or unsafe. Hand sanitizers have become nearly ubiquitous over the last 20 years, offered in workplaces, schools, restaurants, and other public spaces to reduce the spread of germs. Yeah, I see them all the time. Since 2009, I don't use them. About 90% of sanitizers sold to the public have included either ethanol or ethyl alcohol, according to agency officials. Under current regulations, manufacturers can make broad claims about their products' effectiveness in killing germs. Bottles of Purell hand sanitizer, for example, say, kills 99.99% of illness-causing germs. That's well and good, but I still like to rinse the crap off my hands. FDA regulators suggested they may tighten such claims after reviewing the information submitted by manufacturers. We're not trying to alarm people said Dr. Janet Woodcock. <laughs> it's almost like uh, Mrs. Uh, Hardwick from the Debbie Does Dallas movie. Mrs. Hardwick. Woodcock. Director of the FDA's drug sensibly, ethanol and humans have coexisted for a long time. So there's a lot that's known about it. But the agency has concerns about the possible long-term consequences of frequent use by children and women of childbearing age, particularly those who are pregnant or breastfeeding. Yeah, well, it's stuff, you know, it, it, anything that absorbs is considered transdermal. You know, you have to think about what it does when it transdermally gets in your system. Yeah. I mean, uh, well, like, they haven't done that for 20 years. In the words of Ed Norton from The Honeymooners, there's always hope where there's water and soap. There you go. And uh, you go. I like to wash with soap and rinse. I like to rinse. Now, between washing, like if it's a real humid day and my face gets sweaty, I'll use a cotton ball with rubbing alcohol and clean my, ah. my face, my forehead. And it works. Dries your skin. Well, alcohol uh, dries your skin. Only in, in when the humidity is high. You know what I mean? But, but I'm removing, because I have a cotton ball, I'm not rubbing it in, I'm removing dirt, dust, sweat, but the alcohol uh, uh, drying sebum. I like to feel clean. I don't like to be sticky and sweaty. But anyway, we're going to go to lunch, and you will be joined by our commercial voiceover artist, William Hamilton Morrow III, with promo. And we will be back. And that's just right. And that's a threat, yeah. We got, you also are going to see how to defeat a conservative Bible verses. Simply pause and learn. If you're capable of doing that, America. Uh. Look. This is William H. Morrow. 
The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye bye. Okay, we're back. Thank you very much, William Hamilton. Tomorrow the third. This is progressive discussions you're looking at right now. And it happens to be Fourth of July weekend, 2016. Remember this Chicago song? Saturday in the park. Every day's the Fourth of July. Happy birthday! It was a Monday. Monday. Happy birthday to my mother, Rosemary. I think she's turning 84. I think. She's born July 4th, 1932. So I'm assuming that might be 84. But I'm not good with numbers. Men are usually, unless you're a math wizard, you know, I don't know. Like 84. 84. And also happy birthday to the, uh, corporate oligarch fascist states of America and uh, if you caught the beginning of the show it was pretty much about how Loretta Lynch uh, and the Obama administration was uh, is protecting Hillary Clinton and also at the same time simultaneously screwing the Bernie Sanders uh, grassroots revolution now, does the FBI have to answer to Loretta Lynch? Is she the, or could the FBI do work independently of Loretta Lynch? Yep. They can. So That's there is why a. She said that she's not going to interrupt it, not going to get in the way. So there is a director that oversees the FDR, FBI that is just not Loretta Lynch. Comey. Comey, okay. Comey, I believe, is the director of the FBI. Okay. The Federal Bureau of Investigation. Okay, well. Which uh, is taking too damn long to examine the emails. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And they're and they're and they're finding suspicious uh, information all the time. But uh, how well, they long? They found out that Trey Gowdy uh, uh, did something with the emails. something bad okay with her emails to try to convict well that's not good because then it then it makes it harder exactly. it makes it harder on Bernie Sanders because because then people will feel sorry for Hillary Clinton if if uh, if Gowdy uh, because then they're gonna like it's gonna postpone the whole thing the uh, Indictment. Well, it's going investigation. to it's going to fall into the right wing vast conspiracy theory. No, no, which she's, has nah, she's guilty as all. Bill hell. and Hillary. Nah, she's guilty as all. It's a jabroni. That's uh, I think he's on my friends list and a member of our Facebook group, which is called uh, Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. Uh, his name is the. Uh, my, I, think his, I think his name is Michael Whitehead or something. Mm -hmm. He's one of those uh, ultra-liberal males that is a fan of Hillary uh, that feels that uh, it's either uh, we have to get behind Hillary so a Donald Trump doesn't get elected. Like there's no other choice out there. There's no other options out there. It's got to be the Democratic Party. You know what I mean? I know some people like that. It's got to be a Democrat. Oh no, it can't be a Green Party candidate or well, a, it can a, an be, independent but they won't get the votes. 
and then Trump will win. And what about what about the uh, the diehard uh, Bernie Sanders supporters voting for a Jill Stein? That's a possibility. The ones that hate Hillary's guts. That's a possibility. And then you get uh, the independents and the uh, voter, voters who did not vote in the primary. Yes, then Bernie can come out on top. The general election. General election. Because the primaries, thanks to uh, the, the hawk nosed Deborah Wasserman Schultz, were rigged in favor of Hillary. She's like, and she's being sued too. The woman should burn, she should rot in hell, man. She, she deserves more than being sued. What she did to the grassroots revolution is unforgivable. I wish her, I wish she succumbs to a natural disaster, honestly. You know. So anyway, let us sink our teeth back into these readings. <clears throat> Scientists from Montclair State University are searching inlets at the Jersey Shore this week to better understand the invasion of a Pacific Ocean jellyfish species that packs a particularly painful sting and which was seen for the first time in New Jersey waters this month. Oh, it, uh, I wonder if it has to do with climate change and uh, maybe our temperatures, our water temperatures are warmer up here. So, uh, you know, was it? I know the Portuguese man of war packs a, a, a venomous sting. The species called clinging jellyfish. Klingons. Is about the size of a penny. Oh, gee, that's small. And hard to see. Oh, God, that makes it worse. Because it is transparent, except for a thin colored cross across its body. They are native to the South China Sea. How about that? Well, hope they must have got over here on a shipping container. I hope they're not radioactive. And first showed up in early June in the Manasquan River in Ocean County. Manasquan River? That's where my... Um my, my brother lives over there, Brick, New Jersey. It's by Point Pleasant Beach. And the Shrewsbury River in Monmouth County. I know that also. That's by Sandy Hook. The species favors calm, shallow, protected water where it can attach itself to eel grass. Interesting. I wonder if anybody has maintained jellyfish in an aquarium, in a marine aquarium. I wonder if they survive. I gotta Google that. So experts say there is little likelihood it will show up along Nor New Jersey's ocean beaches to terrorize swimmers. <laughs> terrorize. Still, its preferred habitat is similar to that of Barnegat Bay. Yeah, which is also by, like, Point Pleasant, Bricktown, Seaside Heights, Manilakin. And, should it migrate there, Ortley Beach, it could pose a serious hazard for boaters and those who wade through the bay's shallow areas. Hey, I'd rather, I'd rather deal with uh, jellyfish than deal with uh, uh, bull sharks. You know, something like that. But just be thankful it's not the infamous box jellyfish down in the uh, Australian reef, which has no antidote. I think, or I think if you don't get to the emergency room within 20 minutes, you're dead. Mm -hmm. Something of that nature. If they showed up in Barnegat Bay, it would be awful, said John Gaynor a molecular biologist at Montclair State who is studying the species. 
the State Department of Environmental Protection gave Gaynor and Paul Maloney, Bologna, it's called Bologna, 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 a Montclair State biologist and jellyfish expert, thirty-six thousand dollars to study how widespread clinging jellyfish are in the Shrewsbury and Manasquan River. Eh, it has to do with, uh, has to do with climate change, it has to do, uh, I'm sure it has to do with the water temperature. Come, they come from the South China Sea, which I believe is, uh, tropical, or subtropical, or maybe tropical. And, uh, I don't know how the hell they got this far. You know, bologna is nothing but a big, fat, gigantic uh, knockwurst, which is nothing but a big, fat, gigantic hot dog. Frank Footer on steroids. Dr. Frank Footer. Uh, uh, that's, a, that's a podiatrist with a foot fetish. Dr. Frank Footer. Fucking funny, am I not? Am I not? Those are the levity bells. Go ahead. Term limits are seen as a panacea for doing nothing legislators. Excellent, excellent panacea. But they may well cause more problems than they solve. Oh, what is the problem with getting rid of uh, good for nothing uh, politicians? Well, we already have term limits in the House, two years. But they keep voting them back. Yeah, they keep that? coming back. That's right. That's right. Like you, cockroaches. So that means don't. That means you cannot continue to blame the politician. You must blame. That's correct. The American voter. That is correct. Yeah. That keeps shooting himself in the foot. Consider that in assuming an elected position, each official has a learning curve before becoming fully adept at navigating the system. Term limits would mean a larger number of, of officials learning the ropes before becoming effective. Learning the ropes, learning how to steal. Yeah, 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 Taxpayers' yeah, yeah. money. Rather than term limits, let's get rid of gerrymandering. All right, which, now we're talking. Which customizes a district to lean one way or the other. Term limits have the negative impact of thwarting voters from choosing someone who has been effective. To deny the electorate the ability to retain someone who has been responsive and productive and replace that person with a lesser candidate would be a tragedy. The bottom line, though, is that there are term limits in place right now. It's up to the electorate to retain or reject candidates when they run for re-election. We the voters are responsible for who gets elected. Here, here. Uh, get there, there. They're there. Get rid of term limits. Get rid of gerrymandering. Throw the bums out. Uh, overturn Citizens United. Get rid of superdelegates and the Electoral College and just have the popular vote to determine who gets elected. The great wizard James P. Madonna has spoken. Clean house. Clean out the barn like uh, uh, H. Ross Perot used to say. Gotta clean out the barn. And that's how you do it. Completely, totally fair election. What the Romans could not accomplish yeah. after the sack right. of their capital in the year 410, Donald Trump will do for the United States in no time. He will raise the country from a state of utter devastation and humiliation. He will. With plenty of overseas experiences like Miss World Beauty Pageants, <laughs> 
and golf course outings in Ireland and Scotland. See, he knows about foreign policy. Trump will revolutionize foreign policy and diplomacy. I was talking to my Aunt Helen, and uh, she's praying for Donald Trump uh, to win. I, she despises Hillary Clinton, but, I mean, praying for Donald Trump to win, that's like, who do you vote for, Satan or, or his... His uh, highest-ranking demon. His spawn. His spawn. You go. Do you go for the spawn of Satan, or do you vote for Satan himself? Yeah. It's like you know, going from the frying pan into the furnace. The frying pan into the furnace. But they look at him like he's a savior. There are many uh, That's Republican. That's the title of this particular letter. Republican. Donald voters. Trump could be the savior. That's how they look at Donald Trump. Go ahead, continue. This is a good. This is a good. The letter. only thing that Donald Trump is saying that is that has any merit right now is the trade stuff that he's talking about. Yeah, with the tariff. The other stuff. Yeah, like with the tariffing, you know, with slapping the thirty-five percent tariff and making trade deals that benefit the United States instead of the other countries that we make the damn trade. Deals with. Plus, Donald Trump is not too keen on jobs that are being shipped overseas. Really? Where are his ties made? I got news for you. If you look inside, Bangladesh. If you look inside of where the, is his suits made? Overseas. overseas. Thank you. If you look inside and more. If you look inside of his, uh, uh, you know, campaign caps. Donald Trump for uh, 2016 it says made in China. Yes, yeah, the red hat too. So they say an awful lot when they run for office, politicians. But when you ask him, he will tell you that he did it because he could, because it's legal. So and how to is save he, him money? So how is so he, how could he be a savior? So how is how can he be a savior to the American people? Then? Exactly. If he's a savior, so he's a hit by Craig. If he's a savior to himself only, he's a capitalist. How the hell can you be a savior to the American people? I had to do Bingo. A Howard Cosell and Magnified. How can you be a savior to the American people? Bingo. Bingo. I mean, come on, man. It's common sense. Politics is logic and common sense. It's not rocket science. What does But it's pathological. What does the candidate bring to the table for Me. you? For you. If you're a if you're a poor slob living week to week, uh, you know, barely paying your bills. Do you think Hillary Clinton is gonna do anything for you? No. Hell no. And neither was Donald Trump. If you're rich, yes. If you're rich, stingy, and greedy, yes. We had someone out there who would. But the voters were afraid of change. They were afraid. Yeah, but Mr. Boyney said. But don't forget. Don't okay. forget about the voter fraud because there was a massive amount of people showing up at Bernie Sanders rallies. But we'll never be able to prove that. That's the problem. Because it's okay. not, it's not, it's probably not really investigated. Exactly. You know, like when you really do something? Yeah, like a Columbo. You really have thousand dollars a year uh, salary and really does the job. He yeah. really does a good job. Columbo. Well, he's a public servant. He looks at it that way. I'm a So are servant. congressmen and senators and the Presidente. They are public servants. Servants! You hear the great operative word? Mm. Servants. Thank you. Right. So if it's your job to investigate wrongdoing or possible breaking of laws, you, you're, 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 you're expected to follow through. Why do you think the FBI was invented with Mr. Uh, J. Edgar Hoover? No, not that jerk. The uh, Elliot Ness. Elliot Ness. Because he was untouchable. Because there was so much corruption around, 
in all the other organizations, they had to invent this new one. You know what's funny about the early... Get. What's going on? You know what's funny That's about the, the early FBI? What they considered... Look, as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing... I don't consider anything corrupt about prohibition. I don't think there's anything wrong about making booze. I don't think there's anything wrong with marijuana. I don't think there's anything wrong with prostitution. They're all frivolous, like uh, yeah, like victimless, uh, silly crimes. They're, they're but it spawned Al Capone and organized crime. Yeah, but if it wasn't booze, you know, I'm sure Al Capone would have found other ways to make money. Yes. It's not, that's what happened. It's not, you know... Uh, that's what happened. It's not, What a fat-ass cat that is. Who is that? Grayson. He doesn't belong eating out of that bowl. No, we know whose fault that is. But I can't. The cat lady down the street. Anyway. He's, he's learned to open the cat. He's put, that's his under you. Oh, but he He's wants supposed this. To come in and open it. He wants, when he went there. But he right, right. Now anyway, I have, now I have to clean the bowl and throw away the food into his bowl because I ain't gonna let uh, Mama eat from the bowl because I don't know if he has anything. Cross you know? cross contamination. That's correct. Right. But his anyway. warm affection for Putin. Warm affection for, for what? Vladimir Putin. Oh yeah, Vladimir Putin is cool, man. He's like a superhero. Once considered the ruler of an evil empire, will turn the Russian bear into a pussycat. Vladimir Putin has turned out to be a a a great progressive political leader. He has blossomed into sort of a into a hero, and and he has many. Uh, Admirers, let's put it that way. A true leader can't be imitated, intimated, intimidated in crisis situations. A cool head is needed to decide whether and when to press the red button. He never said Donald Trump was brilliant. He just said he was a colorful character. Donald Trump changed it to... He likes me. He likes, he likes me, me a lot. He thinks I'm, he thinks I'm smart. I'm this. I'm this. I'm blah, 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 blah. All, the, all those extra accolades that, that came out of Trump's mouth. He just said, you know, he's a colorful character. You know, now, now, now the uh, president of Turkey is trying to make nice, nice with Putin, with Putin in Russia, apologizing for shooting down the Russian uh, uh, plane and pilot. I wouldn't trust Turkey, man, because they they do business with ISIS secretly with his former casino endeavors no one knows the game of chance better than trump yeah. worst case he could only be 50 percent wrong once elected trump will order united states companies operating manufacturing sites in china and mexico to close their plants and bring jobs back yeah, or we're just not going to allow you to sell your products. Your jet's as simple as that. You either tariff the hell out of the products coming back to the U.S. for sale, or you just don't allow the products back in. He will also have a serious talk with himself regarding his China-made fashion items. Oh. oh, somebody threw that up to his face already? The only dilemma is strong belief that U.S. workers earn far too much to be competitive. So how, with the cost of living in the United States, how do U.S. workers make ends meet? He's not thinking of it like that. He's thinking of it from self-interest. Self-interest. Thank you. But he wants to make America great again. Yes, he does. Okay. I guess they don't fit together, those two terms, do they? How do you make America? So he must be a hypocrite. How do you make America great again if you're only making the rich great again, greater, greater, him himself and his buddies? Mm -hmm. So how do you make America is like the middle class and the poor? And but they don't want the poor and the middle class. 
has to be involved in government because then they'll take they'll make things for themselves instead of for the other. Well, when you say you make America great again, he's really not talking about we the people. He's not talking about some 80 some percent of the people. No, he's talking yeah. about the top 20%, right? Yeah, about 20%, yeah. Yep. They just they, they they just don't have the disclaimer at the bottom of their of what they say, you know. Billionaire Trump catered most of his life to the top 1% creating luxury resorts, lavish condo complexes, and award-winning golf courses. After election victory, though, the new Captain America will drastically shift gears and work tirelessly for the sole benefit of the angry, frustrated, and disillusioned common guys. Tirelessly? I don't think he's going to work that hard. Who are wearing his bright red cap. He'll work smarter. That's what you got. That's the way you work. You work smarter, not harder. Oh, yeah, the bright red cap. How, you can't be all Yankee Doodle Dandy flag waving, you know, America this and America that if your, your campaign merchandise is made in China. That's kind of hypocritical. What do you think? Kind of? <laughs> I do seven bells because seven is a very lucky number. Change of pace. Tomato paste. I knew my husband for two years before we married, four years ago. My problem is, we are no longer intimate. Oh, no, a, they got to work at it, you know, you can't let yourself go. Not even hugs or kisses. Monogamy is hard work. For the first two years, we did have sex, but the only affection I get now is a kiss on my forehead or my hand. Let me tell you something. When, my, when those shows that are on early, Jerry Springer and uh, Bill Cunningham, whatever, all those shows that go on, maybe even Maury Povich, I'm not sure if he's still on the air, when they're on, they and they show the, the wives that are in trouble with their relationship with their marriage. When they show the wives, these women are fat, man. <laughs> they're fat, and I, I guaranteed if you see their wedding pictures, nine times out of ten, they're, I'd say they're not fat. I'd say they're they probably look very nice. Let me tell you something. You cannot just assume because I hooked a man and I got him to marry me <gasps> and I had his kids, <gasps> children, and he's always he's gonna love me no matter what. Oh, he may love you. He's not gonna bang you. So, you know, get your act together. When I asked if we could sleep together during the weekends, he refused. He says the reason is he has to finish his work. Nah, no, she's probably fat, fat fuck. I have told him how much this hurts me. Yeah. And he keeps promising to change. <laughs> you hurt me. But uh, it never happened. Uh, Five hundred pounds, and I got, I got cellulite in my ass, and I got flabs in my belly. But he, well, he don't want to. <laughs> no intimacy. When I recently asked him why, he said he was shy. He's shy? How long have they been married? Uh, four years, I think you said. And he's shy? <laughs> oh. I am starting to doubt his love for me. Oh. Because when I need him, he's not there. Hey, their women are mixing love and sex together, and that's not, that's a mistake. And when I need his support, he doesn't protect me. Protect her from what? His mother is pushing us for a grandchild. She blames me for not forcing her son to sleep with me. Forcing him? He hold the gun to his head. Get that dick strong and erect. Get that dick strong and erect. You better impregnate me. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't want, you know, once you have a kid, 
you're pretty much in in a marriage prison with the woman. Yeah, I won't have a kid yet. With the well, you're if you do. The grandmother, I mean, the mother-in-law wants one. If you do, you're you're kind of stuck with the woman you have for for the next uh, eighteen years or so. I spend most of my time working out at the gym or doing volunteer work. Yeah, what does she do? Which keeps me from getting too depressed. But when my mother-in-law starts in, I feel scared and don't dare go back to my house. Mind your own damn business, tell her. Every what is few she? nights. Marie Barone from the TV series? I have nightmares. Of, her, of his mother-in-law? And wake up crying. Crying? I'm God. beginning to think I should end this marriage. Should I? This guy's got no balls. Stand up to your mother-in-law and say, mind your own damn business. That's what's causing stress. Dear Abby's. It's got no balls, man. It's got no balls. Conclusion. It's got no, it's got dry sack. Whatever is going your husband, it doesn't appear that he has been completely candid with you. That's true. He appears to be using his workload as an excuse. Yes. Not to be intimate. And shyness. I also seriously doubt that his problem is shyness. <laughs> Your husband may have erectile difficulties. Yeah, probably due to her. It's her probably her fault. She's probably fat. She's at the gym. No, he's at the gym. She. She. She goes to the gym. She spends most of her time working out at the gym or doing volunteer work. Oh, maybe she's not fat. Your husband may have erectile difficulties or yeah. a diminished sex drive. Maybe he needs, uh, he has low T, low testosterone. Which are medical problems that could be fixed if he was willing to address them. Uh, red Panax a ginseng will do the trick. No, today they have the one pack of Viagra. You're talking about pharmaceutical drugs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Screw that. Yeah. No, I go, I go Mother Nature. He may be involved with someone else. Maybe shooting his load with a... Uh, he's emptying his flapjacks with another woman. Or not be interested in women at all. Oh, you mean he's... Uh, he might, or... Maybe turning gay, you mean? Simply fallen out of love with you. Yeah, I always, uh, I always find that confusing and hard to understand. If it, how do you, I mean, unless somebody is like really rotten to the core, how do you fall out of love if the marriage vows uh, are, are pointing towards sort of a um, unconditional love? You know, when you hear the marriage vows, the, the love is, sounds like it's supposed to be unconditional if it is a marriage of the the mind and the body but however the marriage vows are of the mind and not of the body uh, so if the body right? is, different things. is not in sync yeah the body is not in, in sync, sink. In the kitchen sink regardless of what your mother-in-law says a child is not your answer and would only complicate matters further. Yes, it will increase the stress. Yes. That if is very your true. husband would consent to counseling with you, it might help. If not, by all means, talk to a lawyer. Some people think that the baby magically. Oh, they mealed off. Oh, the baby Ma solves everything. Magically will bring them closer together. No, oh, yeah. That's like sweeping the problem under the carpet, under the rug. I mean, it doesn't make, it doesn't change anything between the relationship. It, it'll make you grow further <laughs> apart because a kid is the biggest cock blocker known to man. <laughs> he will prevent sex. It takes sex to make it. Make the kid. 
But when the kid is born, for many years to come, it, he or she will prevent sexual encounters between you and your spouse. Period. Because even people a, don't even discipline. A, even a hand job? People, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, couples have to make appointments and get babysitters and whatever just to have sex. That's bullshit. It comes from modern parenting of no old-fashioned discipline. You tell your kid to go to your room, don't mm. knock on the door. Hurry up, grab it! Oh Gee, my I, God. I must have been too vigorous with my shillelagh. I, I'll pick it up. What was I saying? I digress. Oh. <laughs> go to your room don't knock on mommy and daddy's door when that door is shut do not disturb go to your room and shut up or else or else do you hear me now I'll pick it up what if the kid no don't make sure you pick it up unless the kid has got a pro a, a bona fide problem make sure you pick it up in the the direction it's supposed to be that's right the, now that's everything is upside down well, then how did it fall? It fell opposite of the way it was? That's correct. Yeah, so, but anyway, you said, what if the kid, well, it has to what be What if a, the kid's sucking a nip? How are you going to tell him to go to his room? No, no, I'm not talking about if the mother, if the kid is at a nursing age and the mother is engaged in breastfeeding. No, well, I'm talking about if sure mommy, be if mommy, uh, if it's like, let's say, I don't know, let's pick a number. Let's say it's 10, 11 o'clock and everybody's supposedly in their bedrooms and mm -hmm. mommy and daddy are getting ready for a little action and the kid starts with the bullshit. You know, mommy and daddy, I, uh, I can't sleep. Mommy and daddy, uh, 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 read me a story. I see a monster in my room. Uh, all right. I'm taking this. Ooh, a chihuahua. I'm taking this and just, just totally, turn it all around. That's totally it. doing that. That's it. And that, that goes back like that. And then it, oh, no wonder it fell. You don't have it stuck. It's on a dia a slant. No, well, I mean, it had to be touched. Head. No, don't put that thing back on all top right. either. No, yes. What the fuck is this? Oh, oh, it goes in here. Yeah, I think. No, that's a hand rest. Yeah. Yeah, no, you got to glue this, man. Thing. I don't use it. Mm. The ergonomic crap, all this shit. Yeah, ergon you know what? The ergonomic. Let me tell you something, brother. I'm going to tell you something, brother. Hey, you going to tell you something, brother? The ergonomic um, computer mouse with the, the cushion that lifts up your wrist. I still get pains in my right wrist. I still have to wear a brace around my right wrist. It doesn't prevent anything last one last one that's it we're, we're done for the fourth of July special show Elizabeth Warren oh god here we go offered an impassioned <sighs> endorsement of Hillary Clinton on Monday vouching for her as someone who could be trusted you gotta be kidding she said the same thing that Jesse Jackson said. She to, can be trusted? To fight for workers. Holy shit. And fend off Donald Trump. It got worse. She's lying through her teeth about Hillary Clinton. Oh my God. The two most powerful women in the Democratic Party clasped hands and held them high overhead, offering a powerful visual and a preview of what could be a historic presidential ticket. Do you see what I mean? You see, you hear, you hear this article, his history made again. You hear the lies coming out of Elizabeth Warren's mouth, of, of the praises of Hillary Clinton, how she totally did an about face and switched from from her her uh, her stance before. Here's what it boils down to. Hillary has brains. She has guts. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> she has thick skin. 
uh, and steady hands. And she's ruthless and relentless too. Said Warren. Oh wow! All these all these compliments. She's really sucking it up big. She's really sucking up the Hillary big time. A champion of the party's liberal base. Liberal base. Before 2,600 cheering supporters at the Cincinnati Museum Center at Union Terminal. I hate to say uh, an all-female ticket will turn off male voters. Uh, but most of all, happen. Hillary has a good heart. Holy shit, she even said that? Hillary has a good heart? And that's what America needs. Hillary has a good heart. Despite all the wicked things that the Clinton dynasty and Hillary has done or has been involved in, she has We a are a very heart. forgiving country. You see that Cheney and G.W. Bush are still around, don't you? Instead of being in jail, where that's they belong for war crimes. That's because they got pardoned by Barack Obama. But that's because uh, the, the Obama administration did not choose to go after G.W. Bush Bingo. and Dick Cheney. They're protected just like Hillary Clinton is protected. The establishment is protecting the establishment. Plain and simple. Later, in a speech in Chicago, Clinton turned to the issue that has dogged her for more than a quarter of a century, her trustworthiness. She pledged to earn voters' trust oh, really? and defended what some say are two cautious statements that can sound calculated. I personally know I have work to do on this front. A lot of people tell pollsters they don't trust me. And that's putting it mildly. Clinton told the Rainbow Push Coalition. I don't trust Elizabeth Warren now, that's for sure. You can't just talk someone into trusting you. You've got to earn it. Oh, that's, that's true. The picture-perfect image in Ohio marked an important moment of party unity after Clinton's long-fought primary against liberal challenger Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders, a um, big mistake when he said, Madam Secretary, with all due respect, no, I'm not questioning your integrity, after she, she asked him if he was. So, mm, suck up, neo neoliberal. Pander, pacifist, sucker. Go ahead. Who has not yet endorsed his former rival, and with Warren under consideration to be Clinton's running mate, it may also be a glimpse of the party's future. Warren showed how she could play attacker in chief against Republican Donald Trump. Well, now I'm siding with Trump after what I just heard. Calling him a small, insecure, money grabber, a nasty man, and goofy. Well, yeah, because Trump called her goofy because she she's a door has a dorky looking body and face and hey, money grabber. Hillary's not a money grabber. <laughs> what a joke. An unprecedented two woman ticket would electrify the party's liberal wing boosting enthusiasm for Clinton's campaign as she continues to face high, unfavorable ratings. Because the liberal wing only wants to make history. Warren could also help Clinton combat the perception that the multi-millionaire former first lady is disconnected from the struggles of working Americans. She's been disconnected and uncaring about that since day one. An image promoted by Sanders during his campaign. Oh, so Sanders is lying? Huh. I doubt that. Sanders.
Brothers is is the real deal, the real honest deal. The real mock deal. With integrity that doesn't owe a dime to any corporation or a wealthy person. Not a dime. So that's that. This is the, the comedy is over. They're establishment career politicians lying through the... one again! I'll say it again. They are establishment career politicians lying through their teeth and uh, it's so obvious. But, unfortunately, there are many naturally stupid people in America. They're just naturally born stupid. You have to be. You have to be not to see the obvious. What other logical explanation is there except for the fact that <clears throat> Hillary is in a satanic cult and she knows witchcraft and she put a spell on all these uh, imbeciles, you know? Fear of change. Well, you know, it's like it's like the person who wants to lean on my shoulder and cries about their personal life but doesn't want me to solve any of their problems. Doesn't want me to give them the solution. And I'm not just blaming it on women who do that. There are men that do that. I know a guy who does that. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Complain, complain. Wah, 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 wah. When I give him a solution. He ignores it. It goes over his head. Mm -hmm. It's illogical. Where is mm -hmm. he? Old man Leonard Nimoy. It is completely illogical. If you don't want me to solve the problem, then don't tell me the problem. I'm not interested. If you don't vote, don't complain. Either to me, to my face, or on social media. I don't want to hear you. But now we have a situation where the uh, elections... The primaries are definitely rigged. I know they are. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't like, um, it wasn't, it, 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 the investigation did not go public. I know that the establishment knows that the primaries were rigged by the DNC. They just don't want to go public with it. But, um, but generally, general election is different and, uh, Bernie Sanders has a choice. He could have done it since day one. It's his choice. He could have easily went independent. You know how many letters Jill Stein wrote Bernie Sanders? And uh, he could have avoided this whole DNC, Wasserman Schultz, rigged election crap, you know? Anyway, we'll see you next time. Have a safe 4th of July weekend. Um, uh, eat good barbecue. Uh, I'm, you're not going to see me on, on any major highways because I don't do traffic. Not Speaking if I, of safe. Not if I can help it. What's up? Speaking of safe, you see the guy who uh, was a great advocate of the self-driving car? He's dead. The car got in a crash. Oh, the car with the computer that sort of goes on automatic pilot? No, the car drives itself. I just said that! No, you're talking... This you. guy yeah. always takes what I say and uses a synony synonymous words and makes it sound like it's different from what I say. The, you're the, talking about something like cruise control. I'm talking about the car no. drives itself. And it parks itself. Yes. It does all. It does all the above itself. Yeah, without you're, a driver. What you're telling me is the car crashed. The car crashed with the guy inside. He's dead because the computer mistook a white uh, semi, uh, eighteen wheeler yeah. in front for the sky you gotta and be drove kidding. into it. You gotta be kidding me. So it ain't as perfect or mundo as it should. Maybe the computer in the car was female. Maybe it was a okay. female. It was a female driver. So we need some extra work. Women driver. I said this as soon as I saw the article when they first came out. 
a car that drives itself, you're gonna trust a machine with your life and sit in the car, park your lazy ass in the passenger seat, and let some computer drive your car, and you're gonna trust it. No, no, no way. And sure enough, it happened. A fatality. We're not at that point yet. It's uh, how do you mistake? Maybe have an Android drive. How do you mistake? A, uh, a tractor trailer. The white of the trailer for the white of the sky. For the white clouds in the sky. No, no, no. no good, no good. It ain't gonna work. Uh, it yeah, didn't well, work. <laughs> well, an android, if they're attractive enough, uh, oh my God. can do housework uh, without breaking my things and could provide sex. And that's it. Ooh. And that's it. No conversation. I don't want to talk about uh, poetry or uh, or um, what do you call it? politics or you know. I don't want like the geisha. You know they 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 uh, they were good at the art of conversation. From Story what I telling. hear, huh? Storytelling. Nah, I don't, I don't need that. The Arabian Nights, baby. She kept the king entertained for nights after night with stories. Really? Yeah, read the Arabian Nights. How Never long had. how long did he have to listen to were these stories long winded? They satisfied him every night, didn't they? But when 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 were they supposed to have sex? I don't know if they were. Yeah, what, good, what good is it? I, I'd send that android back. I send the harem girl back. I, I I say no no, return, return to sender, address unknown. No such number, no such phone. Have a good one, no guy. No such bone. No such bone. <laughs> ah, you're funny. <clears throat> Romancing the bone. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.